the simple purity of flowers in a garden on a warm summer's day. Yes, it's peaceful. The blues and greens are restful and the scene does not demand too much from you. It would be perfectly reasonable to allow yourself to drift into a reverie about a spring or summer morning, the buzz of insects, a pleasant warmth on your face, a soft breeze, a pleasing assemblage of colour and shapes. And there would be nothing wrong in doing this. In looking at a work of art, our first impressions count. When you wander through a gallery, it is usually impossible to take in every painting properly. So we are drawn to certain ones, sometimes right across a room full of competing images. Part of that is the perceived skill of the artist. In some cases, our eyes are drawn to high realism. Oh, it looks just like a photograph, people may exclaim, without realising that this isn't always a compliment. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video. But we don't see high realism here. There are few shadows and the planes of some of the colours are quite flat, most evident in the foliage of the irises. Our eyes are also drawn to colour, particularly complementary colours, and to value contrasts, strong delineations between light and dark. Subject matter is also important, of course. If we can see or imagine a story, we can be drawn in. But again, this painting does not tell an obvious story. As you spend more time in a gallery, you may find your eye seeks out freshness. A sense that the work of art has been put together with an economy of effort. The much vaunted, bold brush strokes that we do see here, and an absence of any parts being worked to death or blended to oblivion. It can be harder to define this, but you know it when you see it. And here Vincent has laid down the silvery green and multiple cool blues in all the right places. As our eyes wander, we rest on one set of blues after another. The irises are vigorous, full of life and promise. Their organic forms are set against the straighter lines of their leaves, the lines leading us to the blooms. The irises are set in a garden of, perhaps, marigolds, with smaller white flowers appearing in a field behind. Squint your eyes and you will find that the overall tone of the painting does not vary that much. Sure, there are some darker irises set against a lighter background, but the dynamic range, to borrow a photographic term, is not that great. Rather, it's the colour that arrests us providing a painting that is both restful in subject matter, but with a subtle dynamism in complementary colour. It's not in your face, rather it's done in smaller moments. Here, the red of this stroke of the ground against the green of the foliage. Here, the blue of the iris against the orange of the marigold. The effect is of abundance and vigour. Despite the softness of the petals, the simplicity of the subject, and the overall quiet tone of the light variations. The foreground irises are detailed, the background flowers less so, finishing with mere smudges of colour the further back we go. All of this mimics the way we see. This is obvious to most of us, I suppose, but especially to artists who know that painting this way creates depth, a two-dimensional rendering of a three-dimensional world. Have you noticed the bare earth yet? Because it's here that the energy of the painting is best seen. Reds, yellows, oranges and browns are rendered not into a smoothed out mud, but left whole in individual strokes that read as glints of multiple colours forming a soil. Not all of them really earthy, but nevertheless somehow our eyes create the ground, a living soil from which spring our healthy irises. Over here, a single white flower, not like the others, a little bit out of place, but still allowed to be part of the garden. Maybe this is how Vincent saw himself. Vincent painted irises in 1889, after he voluntarily admitted himself to the Saint Paul de Mossol Asylum in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, France. 
The irises are in the hospital garden. Painting them seems like therapy for him, or at least a way to help provide respite from his mental troubles. He called painting the lightning conductor for my illness. There is an energy in the composition, a collection of many objects gathered together into larger groupings, the irises, their foliage, the marigolds, the field, the soil, a way of taking these many objects and rendering them into a more understandable components of a garden while at the same time composing them of tiny, individual, multiple strokes of varying colours. Any individual components of the painting shown up close are wild, but overall they have been tamed into a restive and peaceful scene. His inner feelings and turmoil quietened for now, as he lives in this idyllic, quiet asylum. The following year he would be dead at his own hand, the shocking wheat filled with crows, perhaps his last painting, a stark contrast to the irises, an angry sky behind disturbed crows wheeling over a path that is cut off in the wheat field. But here in irises, Vincent has found some peace, at least for now. A summer's day, restful flowers, gorgeous colours, a celebration of life, a moment of joy. You know, it, it interests me as to whether a painting should just stand on its own or whether it should be considered in a broader context. Would irises be as poignant or as peaceful if we didn't know that Vincent was troubled in his mind? I don't know. In most things in life, context is important. And while I think that great works of art should be able to stand on their own, adding context can only further our appreciation. What do you think? If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do. I think I've almost hit 800 or maybe I've even broken through 800 and it does encourage me uh, knowing that uh, people find my videos worth watching. Anyway, see you next time.